Holla ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher. Yeah, I'm in Iron Forge. What up? I'm a human and I've got a weird haircut. Whatever. We're doing some fire maids today. And as you guys may be aware, I completely fell in love with this on the beta. Yes, I did. It was one of the most well redesigned classes I had seen in such a long time. I thought it was wonderful. Uh, and let's see exactly how it's holding up on live. That's what you guys are interested in. Uh, a lot of cool stuff going on with the Fire Mage. Wonderful to play. Uh, mass AoE was toned down a little bit, but not too much, and just changed the way we play it. So if you're looking to get into a Fire Mage, this is going to be the guide for you. And let me tell you, there's something wonderful about even the slight RP factor of the Fire Mage because you literally burn things alive. And I absolutely adore that. You'll like that chick from Hellboy. All good. So let's look into the talents. All that good stuff. You're reforging, you're gemming, everything you need to know. Fire, obviously, the classic fireball. Staying true to its roots as a fire casting wizard. We want to cast some fireballs. We also get pyroblast, which is a huge meteoric boulder of fire. And we also get inferno blast, replacing fire blast, which is just guaranteed crits. One of the big problems that fire mages used to suffer from was a lack of guaranteed crits to get those instant cast pyroblasts. Now we have inferno blast to pick up the pace on that. Really awesome. And our big DPS cooldown, Combustion. Combustion been changed slightly if you've played a Fire Mage in the past. Combustion now literally works off Ignite and Pyroblast Dots, okay? Things like Living Bomb and all that do not take into account just the power of your Ignite and the power of your Pyroblast. But still, that Ignite, a little bit tricky, so getting the most out of your Combustion is going to need a little bit of attention from you guys. Uh, so let's get into the talents. Your level 15 talents have some movement in full, uh, movement based abilities like casting Scorch on the move. Ice Flows allows you to cast anything you want to do while you're moving. And of course, Presence of Mind giving you an instant cast spell as well. Always very cool. So you need to pick and choose which is going to suit you in your fight. I like Scorch. I'm going to be running a couple of five mans for you guys. Uh, demonstrating exactly what you should be doing. Putting us in all sorts of different situations. I tend to do this with DPS classes as five mans tend to provide a lot more variety in terms of what we're DPS and how to cope with situations whereas raid bosses tend to be more straight up chain casting into a single target which i can also demonstrate for you in a five man i like scorch i move a lot in a five man these tanks pulling left and right these people going everywhere i like scorch if you're not going to move a great deal then ice flows is probably going to be more beneficial to you just be aware of that Level 3, we get some sort of survivability cooldown. Blazing speed, temporal shield, ice barrier. Temporal shield is always nice if you're going to get some mega attack. Uh, you, t you envelop yourself in a temporal shield. Damage taken while shielded will be healed back over 6 seconds. The spell is usable while stunned, frozen, incapacitated, feared, or asleep, and is not on the global cooldown. Very nice if you're going to take some big heavy damage and you know it's coming. Also cool for this on a 25 second cooldown is ice barrier. And this is what tends to be the big PvE one. Ice barrier... 106,000 damage lasts for one minute. While the shield holds, spell casting will not be delayed. It's all good. This is a wonderful spell. I seriously recommend it. Blazing Speed has its uses as well. Um, but Ice Barrier is really... It's just the bee's knees. It's absolutely fantastic. It's really cool. Uh, <laughs> I really love this one. We get some CC with our level 45 talents. Nothing major in a raid environment, got to be said. Ring of Frost, always nice if that tank dies or there's mobs running left and right. Ring of Frost is going to pull you out of there. Again, whatever you think is going to be the best. You get Frost Jaw, which silences and freezes the target in place for 8 seconds. Uh, lasts half as long versus player targets. Frost Jaw, always nice if that raid boss should require some specific CC. Ice Ward is... It's not that useful. You're very rarely going to get meleeed in a raid, let's face fact. Uh, if a friendly target... When an enemy strikes the target, all enemies within 10 yards will become frozen in place. Very rare. You're going to find much use for that in a raid environment. Ring of Frost, I like it, but it doesn't really matter. Pick whatever you want to use. Okay. Level 60 again, defensive cooldown. Greater invisibility instantly make the caster invisible, reducing all threat and removing two damage over time effects. While invisible, you're untargetable by enemies. The important section there for raiding is removes two damage over time effects. Very important. Damage taken is reduced by 90% while invisible and for three seconds after coming out of invisibility. So it has a lot of uses, does great invisibility, guys. Really does. Cold snap as well. When activated, your spell finishes the cooldown on your ice block. 
which is always handy for those almost wipe situations that last one big attack. You will see on many raid videos, lots of people popping that second ice block to survive just as they're getting that crucial clutch kill. Always very nice. If you're just wanting some passive loving, cauterize is the way to go. An attack which would otherwise kill you will instantly bring you to 50% of your maximum health and will burn for 40% of your health over the next 6 seconds, just buying you that passive time. If you're a little bit worried about getting hit randomly by that boss, getting hit randomly and you might die, nothing should ordinarily kill you, but we all get stuck in those situations sometimes. Cauterize passively saving your ass since 2010, still doing what it says on the tin. Two minute internal cooldown on that one though, so be aware of that. Uh, your next one is sort of tiered to each style. So you've got like Nether Tempest, which seems arcane, Living Bomb, which is the classic fire spell, and now Frost Bomb for the Frosties. Uh, all of them performing pretty damn well single target. You're not going to lose any DPS either way, okay? They're all pretty damn good. Living Bomb, however, can be spread to other targets via Fire Blast, aka Inferno Blast, which means we're going to be doing a ton of those. You're going to pick up a lot of nice passive AoE from Living Bomb. Uh, I always recommend this for the Fire Mage. Okay, Living Bomb should provide overall a higher DPS than the others. Just be aware of that. Level 90, I gotta say, most of these talents just feel like absolute garbage compared to what we actually want. Uh, they tend to take us away from DPS unless it's in Cancer's Ward. I'm just gonna talk about these briefly. You place a magical ward on yourself, a shield, absorbing 24,000 damage for 8 seconds. Absorbed damage will restore 18% of your maximum mana. When this effect ends, you gain up to 30% increased spell damage for 15 seconds based on the absorption used. The passive is increased spell damage by 6% and an increased mana regen by 65%. Fire mages do tend to have some mana issues which are countered by these level 90 talents. That's something to be very, very much aware of. Rune of Power, you place the rune on the ground, which cannot move. It lasts for one minute. It has a six-second cooldown. While standing in your Rune of Power, your mana regen is increased by 100%, again, countering those mana problems that people can have, and your spell damage is increased by 15%. Only two runes of power can be placed at one time. Obviously, people do not like to have to stand to move around. We don't like moving around as a mage. We want to stand completely still, which tends to favor Rune of Power. But in most raids, we're going to be moving around a hell of a lot. That is going to happen. And be aware this replaces your evocation. So if you get good use out of Rune of Power and you can stand still, it's not bad. However, invocation reduces the cooldown of your evocation to just 10 seconds. But you passively generate 50% less mana. So you're really going to hit some mana troubles with this one. Completing an evocation causes you to deal 25% increased spell damage for 40 seconds, which is obviously higher than Rune of Power, not as high as in Cancer's Ward, but you need to be absorbing damage to get that. Be aware, invocation is the largest DPS increase, so you're going to be now tracking a new spell. So if I fire off an evocation right there, let's complete that, I'm going to get myself a badass buff which is going to be Invoker's Energy. So you're going to be now tracking this for 40 seconds, getting a lovely 25% increased spell damage. So much extra damage coming from this. And literally, we're just going to be tracking Invoker's Energy. When it's got a couple of seconds left, we're going to be evocating again, which will negate that 50% less mana regen and also give us another big 25% spell damage buff coming from there. So those are your talents which should provide the best DPS increase for your Fire Mage. Let's talk about Glyphs. Various glyphs here that people really like. Uh, glyph of Fire Blast. Your Fire Blast and Inferno Blast now spread Living Bomb. So obviously, while we're using Living Bomb, it's very nice, especially if we've got some cleave to be doing to get this glyph. So therefore, your Living Bomb is now being spread around. It also activates your other secondaries for your other spells, like Nether Tempest and Frost Bomb. However, we really want to spread our Living Bomb around. It does a tremendous amount of damage. If we just cast a Living Bomb on there, we can see Living Bomb is going to start ticking for 13,000 crits. And then we can spread that with Fire blast and we've got it now ticking on other targets as well you can see the living bomb ticking away on there and we start racking up immense amounts of damage there you can see there the explosion 225,000 damage coming from that Glyph of Evocation is kind of standard textbook, regenerating all your health while you're evocating. Very, very nice. When you with you have, with the Invocation talent, you instead gain 40% of your health upon completing an evocation. So we're going to be evocating or invocating a hell of a lot with this spec. Therefore, we're going to get nice big heals whenever we want. And we can also use that invocation. We don't have to wait for the cooldown. We can use it whenever we want and give ourselves a nice big 40% heal. Very nice to do that. Uh, Glyph of Counter Spell is situation. Your counter spell can now be cast while casting or channeling other spells. However, the big one is combustion. 
When you're raiding, Glyph of Combustion is tend to be the favourable DPS increase. It increases the direct damage, the duration of damage over time effects, and cooldown of Combustion by 100%. So you're going to double the cooldown of Combustion. However, it lines up very, very nicely now with good players who stack a lot of cooldowns at once, which means you're going to get immense Pyroblasts with immense Ignite Dots, which means your Combustion is going to hit like an absolute hammer to the face. If you are a better player and you can guarantee that Combustion is going to tick for its full duration and you can line it up properly, this Glyph is going to be a nice DPS increase. However, for five mans and stuff, I like using my Combustion on Trash. The bosses tend to phase out, do something stupid, very quickly especially as dps is becoming much higher in our five man heroics therefore i like the short cooldown spammable combustion so i can use it much more regular all right guys let's talk about i need to bring up the menu whoa because i know i didn't find it yeah reforging and gemming okay reforging and gemming Critical Strike is immense now for the Fire Mages. It's so, so good. It really is good. You can see we're gemming for a lot of crit. If you've got dual crafting, then Intellect will slightly win. But you want to get as much crit as possible. Your priorities are hit to the cap. You want to get hit capped. You need to get hit caps. Now, you can even use some expertise to get hit caps, but essentially you're going to roll with hits. Get hit caps so you cannot miss. A missed spell is a ton of wasted damage. Missing something like a combustion is just absolute fail boat. You don't want that to happen. Get hit caps. Very, very important. After that, our priorities are pretty simple. Crit as much as possible. Get your crit up. Then get your haste up and mastery is the last to be cared for, okay? Very simple reforging process here. As much crit as possible, then haste, then mastery. That's what you're aiming for, guys. As much crit as you can, then haste, then mastery. Really, really nice. Check your gem in there and that's what you want to be aiming for. Now, your single target rotation is pretty damn easy. Yes, it is. Uh, now, uh, this is a quite high-level geared character. As you can see, this is a 481 geared mage. So, in the basic guide, I'm probably not going to do this justice, uh, but that's okay. You've got to keep living bomb up 100% of the time. In between there, you're going to want to keep casting fireballs, but you also want to have that pyroblast dot ticking, okay? So, your opener will probably be a pyroblast. Now, notice this. This is heating up. This means you're about to get a critical free Pyroblast. Now, with Infernal Blast, we can actually use our Infernal Blast to guarantee the next spell's a crit and then fire off a Pyroblast. So, while keeping up our Living Bomb, we're going to be chaining Fireballs into the target. Our Pyroblast dock will most likely keep up once you start getting reasonable gear. Yeah, I'm suffering from Fire Mage RNG. Give me a damn crit. Keep refresh. There we go. We get that crit. Do not stop casting Fireball. Do not stop casting Fireball. Fireball has a travel time, okay? Fireball has a travel time. However, Infernal Blast is instant. So when you, once you see that heating up ability, once you see that heating up ability, you should start spamming your Infernal Blast, but do not stop casting your current spell. So let's see if we can get another crit here. There we go. You can see I did not stop casting Fireball. Still got the crit. And then chain in that instant cast Pyroblast and go back to casting Fireballs. And you're going to start getting some nice DPS, okay? So you can see there, again, heating up. Use that Infernal Blast, but just spam the button. Spam the button. Oh, Infernal Blast slightly not off cooldown there. Unfortunate, to say the least. There we go. We've got another one there, though. This is why crit is so important, because you start getting a ton of Pyroblast crits. A real ton. And you can see how my mana's wearing down there with this spec, which is why we want to keep that Invocation buff up. Very nice. So you'll keep your invocation buff up. You're going to spam in those abilities. The big thing is do not stop casting to do an Infernal Blast. Keep casting and spam Infernal Blast. Your other spells have a travel time. I'll just show you that. You can very quickly see that that Fireball takes a few seconds before it reaches the target. Whereas Infernal Blast is instant. It's straight there. No problems whatsoever. And when we use Combustion, another thing to notice off is I'm going to fire off a very terrible Combustion here. Let me get a Pyro Blaster on so we can get a Combustion. Is I'm going to use, I'm going to actually use the Infernal Blast so it's on cooldown. Then I'm going to fire off my Combustion. Now watch, Infernal Blast instantly resets, which makes it very easy to spread Combustion. You can see I've got Combustion on both targets now. So do not worry about trying to save Infernal Blast to get that Combustion spread. As soon as you fire off Combustion, your Infernal Blast will be instantly reset. So you can spread that ability. Another spell I want to talk about is our new ability. It's called Alter Time. Okay, Alter the Fabric of Time, causing the caster to return to their current location, health, mana, buffs, and debuffs 
when cast the second time or after six seconds. Okay? So what does this mean? Is alter time is an ability that allows you to snapshot where your character is in terms of buffs. Now what do we know about the pull from the other guides I've done you about doing top class DPS is all your buffs tend to fire off at the very beginning of a fight. People have sat down, they're drinking, they're rebuffing, you might have to res some gangsters, all that kind of stuff. So when we start DPSing we're going to see a lot of buffs fire off. So I'm going to fire off a couple of buffs now. See I've got light weave, and I can also fire off a trinket, although it might be on cooldown now. No, I've got a trinket, so I've got Blossom, I've got Light Weave. What I would do now is alter time. And in six seconds, even though those spells should technically have expired, what will happen is alter time in six seconds time will refresh me. There you go, I got those buffs for an extra duration. Which means I can continue my opening pain train much, much quicker. Mirror Images is a DPS increase as long as the boss or mob will last for at least the 30 seconds that those Mirror Images need to de uh, be DPSing for. It is a DPS increase. So use your Mirror Images on cooldown. Use your Mirror Images. Very important. They are a DPS increase as long as they can get their full duration of DPS out there. Now what about AoE? Up to about 4 or 5 mobs, it's very very simple. We continue our single target rotation and we're going to use Infernal Blast just to spread around our DPS. Remember you want to be able to spread Ignites, you want to be spreading Pyroblast Dots, you want to be spreading all that kind of stuff out with Infernal Blast. However, when we get to 5 plus mobs, we're going to start switching things up a little bit. We're going to start using Flame Strike. And then we're going to mix in a classic spell, Arcane Explosion. Now, you're only going to use this at 5 plus mobs, guys, okay? Is keep that Flame Strike on cooldown and start spamming in the Arcane Explosion. It's going to yield much more DPS if you do that than just doing a single target rotation and trying to spread things out. Obviously, a lovely combustion is always going to be a DPS increase, but that is something for you skilled players to play around with and find out what you think is the best. All right, guys? So a lot to take in there. Let's jump in a five-man and see this bad boy in action. I'm actually really looking forward to this. All right, guys? Bye.